Send me down the river sticks, cause it's fun to fuck with Discord number 26. There has only been one person who has held the rank of six star general for the entire existence of the United States, making him the highest ranked officer in the American army. That man being good old George Washington. I imagine that's more of an honorary thing. But I gotta imagine there's some five-star generals that are just sitting there sobbing, going, I'll never be as good as George Washington! Your hair is made of what you've ingested. This means that if someone takes a hair sample, they can see if you've had drugs in the past six months to three years, depending on your hair length. Well, good luck doing anything with my hair. You're only gonna find traces amount of caffeine. <laughs> and minor amount of antidepressants. Christopher Columbus wasn't actually the first to theorize that the Earth was round. The fact was figured out long before Columbus came into the picture. People just figured that there was just a vast empty sea between Western Europe and Eastern India slash China. And it would be suicide to try to make the voyage. Columbus was just arrogant enough to try anyway and thus stumbled upon the New World. Additionally, he took credit for first sighting the New World when he actually didn't. It was one of his sailors. What a just like a captain taking credit for all the peons work. I think Christopher Columbus wasn't that great of a guy anyway, so I'm not surprised. Billy Joel never sells front row seats in order to see the real fans right in front of him. He gives them away to random people in cheap seats so that the front row isn't always just wealthy people. That's why I mean, Billy, what if there was actually a true fan who was wealthy you could not let them get the front row seat that they probably worked hard in getting? Hey, did you ever think about that, Billy? I'm just kidding. You do you, buddy. There was a man named Torare who was often called the hungriest man in the world. He did many exotic things while in a hospital for a period of time, including eating a whole eel, bones and all. Look up an eel skeleton. But the final kick to the bucket was when he ate... <clears throat> well, you, you, you let your imagination decide. It's not good. Well, if you don't want your imagination to decide, you can actually check out Salmonella's video on it. It gives the whole story of Torare. Dude was weird. Ancient Rome and China were well aware of each other's existence through trade, specifically the trade of silk. In fact, China actually tried to send envoys to Rome in hopes of establishing better contact. This diplomatic mission to the literal other side of the world was thwarted by the Persians, who convinced the envoys that once they passed Persian territory, it would take another two years to reach Rome. The Persians did this in fear that the Chinese and Romans would work out a trade route that would completely bypass the Middle East, thus cutting them out of the incredibly lucrative silk trade. Then I imagine in the future, as soon as they saw planes and ships that can bypass them, they were like, OH COME ON! During the days of Prohibition, illegal homemade alcohol was marked in jugs with certain numbers of X's. Each X represents one distillation. So if the jug had three X's, the alcohol was distilled three times. And you better be careful if you buy alcohol that's been distilled any less, because less distillation means more ethyl alcohol levels, and therefore, more toxicity. The actual kind, not the fandom kind. One distillation would be akin to drinking acid. In 2013, it cost, whoa, $289,500 a year to run a hot dog cart near the Central Park Zoo in New York City. I swear to God, if I think about this hard enough, I'm gonna start walking directly into the ocean. 100% chance things in Pokemon Gen 1 are not 100% chances. Yes, this means your Master Ball has an approximately one out of 256 chance of failure in Gen 1. This is due to an error in the program, where the code to determine if a move lands uses a standard greater slash lesser than instead of a greater slash lesser than and equal. All right, time to use this Master Ball and catch the abomination that is Mewtwo! Lol, well, don't think so. The movie Shrek, oh no, went through several voice actors for the main character before the movie was launched. Spielberg originally wanted Bill Murray to do the voice, but eventually hired Chris Farley in 1996. The role was recast in 1998 with Mike Myers, who insisted on a complete rewrite of the script so as to leave no traces of Farley's version of the character. In 2000, Myers had completed recording his lines and after viewing a rough cut of the movie, asked to completely redo Shrek's dialogue again, this time giving the ogre his iconic Scottish accent. The reason for this was, end quote, There is a class struggle in Shrek between the fairy tale kings and queens and the common people. I always thought that Shrek was raised a working class, and since Lord Farquaad was played English, I thought of Scottish. They scrapped nearly $4 million of animation because of this, but in the end, it paid off. 
Now this is weird. Okay, so you can actually look up one of the rough animatics with Chris Farley's recordings done with Eddie Murphy. And Eddie Murphy's recordings are actually put into the final movie. So it's weird to think that Eddie Murphy's responses were to the Chris Farley Shrek and not Mike Myers Shrek. Isn't that weird? The comedy film My Cousin Vinny, about a lawyer who just passed the bar after multiple failed attempts but still takes on his cousin's murder trial, is shown in law schools as an example of good and bad trial work. One scene in particular, where a public defender asks how a witness could be sure what he saw if he wasn't wearing his prescription glasses and is humiliated when it turns out they're store-bought reading glasses, is used to show the important rule of trial law. Never ask a question if you don't already know the answer. That shouldn't be a lawyer thing, that should just be common knowledge right there. Or as maybe as Detective J.J. Bittenbiter calls it, STREET SMARTS! And a ding dang final is... In the Kirby Right Back At You series, Kirby once threw a monster into the sun on a frying pan and the monster came back fully cooked in a matter of minutes. This means he threw multiple tons, counting the papon and the ridiculously sized frying pan at Mach 73. Yeah, with that strength, people still question him surviving the prelude of World of Light. And he took the joke I was gonna make. Good job, P Ponky Kong. God, I hope you're happy with yourself.